Welcome to The Daily Forecast, September 20th, 2021. I'm Angie Lau, Editor-in-Chief of Forecast News, covering all things blockchain. Okay, well, with just days to go before Korea's September 24th deadline for crypto exchanges to comply with new regulations or shut down altogether, the first crypto exchange to pass the post has been named. We'll get the lowdown on what's going on in a vital week for Korea's crypto industry and a whole lot more coming up. Let's get you up to speed from Asia to the world. First up, South Korea's Upbit becomes the first authorized crypto exchange in the country, just days ahead of Friday's deadline. And even partial compliance with those regulations has its advantages for one exchange. Having the information security management system certification in place played actually a key part in its victory in a lawsuit over crypto hacking and sets a powerful precedent for exchanges' legal liabilities. Forecast News' Danny Park has all the details. Having fulfilled both conditions of the new law, ISMS certification and a bank contract providing investors with fuel name accounts, South Korea's largest crypto exchange, Upbit, submitted its compliance report to the Financial Intelligence Unit on August 20th. Three other exchanges, Bitthumb, CoinOne, and Corbit, have also met the requirements but are not yet officially registered. One expert tells Forecast News what we've seen is only the beginning of regulatory action. And those new regulations have already proved an asset for one exchange which was sued by a user over stolen bitcoins. The user blamed the exchange after a little over 1.7 bitcoin was stolen and transmitted overseas. But the court disagreed as the exchange in question met the ISMR certification, saying the user's information could easily have leaked through the other cracks, such as phone hacking. For Forecast News, I'm Danny Park. Meanwhile, amid ongoing banking challenges for the crypto market in India, peer-to-peer transactions have surged. In fact, crypto exchanges say up to 80% of all transactions are now carried out using peer-to-peer transfers, spot trading, and WhatsApp or Telegram groups. And that's up from 10 to 15% just a year ago. Forecast News Monica Ghosh reports from India on why people are going as old school as you can get on blockchain. Indians are increasingly looking towards alternative transaction methods like peer-to-peer trades after struggling to use more traditional methods. Just last week, SBI, the country's largest public sector bank, blocked payments to crypto businesses via the commonly used unified payments interface. Earlier this year, ICICI Bank reportedly asked payment gateway operators to block crypto transactions and HDFC sent emails warning customers about dealing with cryptocurrencies. The Reserve Bank of India responded in May by reiterating the fact that its 2018 circular asking banks to cut ties with crypto businesses used as a reason for these moves was invalid. But the country's crypto bill, which could help to finally clarify matters, is still awaiting the nod from the Union Cabinet before it can be introduced in Parliament. For Forecast News, I'm Monica Ghosh, Mumbai, India. And finally, just last week, we reported on the rise of second-tier coins, including Cosmos. Well, over the weekend, we saw it reach for the stars as its price soared 35%. According to data from CoinMarketCap that saw the altcoin hitting an all-time high of 44 US dollars and 54 cents Monday morning Asia time, it's the first time the token has crossed the 40 US dollar mark, gaining over 360% since mid-July. Now, it's been on a general upward trend after trading between the Cosmos and Ethereum networks was enabled through integration with SIPChain in late August. Cosmos was among a handful of tokens that did well during last week's market pullback. That group, which also included Polkadot and Avalanche, all support smart contracts. Key to note here. With smart contracts key to facilitating decentralized finance or DeFi, the race to get money behind an Ethereum killer is showing no signs of slowing down. And that's the daily forecast from our vantage point right here in Asia. For more, visit forecast.news. I'm editor-in-chief Angie Lau. Until the next time.